Hi there, friends and followers. My name is Westbound. I just completed my entry for Score Leaf 2022, initiated by Brian Waters and the QTube on behalf of In Place of War. I'm going to put all the links in the description below so you can check it out for yourself. I want to thank uh, Brian Waters for founding the QTube, a great community of uh, composers, film music composers, and aspiring ones like myself. I want to thank Martin Heidenreich for his channel and his videos, which helped me a great deal last year as well as this year. I want to thank in particular all the great manufacturers providing these phenomenal tools that we get to work with. It sounds so realistic, it's phenomenal. And also for donating prizes of uh, worth of $30,000, which is massive. And also I want to thank all the other contenders for their content and their generosity in enabling all of us to learn from each other. So that's really special. Okay, without much further ado, let's uh, share my screen and I'm going to walk you through my project and show you how I went about this. I'm afraid we're going to hear some fan noise because I'm also recording this in a separate application which has the CPU quite busy. So I'm running two video recording applications and Logic and all this on a vintage machine. It's just turned vintage. Okay, so now we should see my template here. First of all, here's the movie uh, here on the right. And uh, I isolated the effects track or the sound, um, what's it called, the sound design from the original movie. I placed it on a separate track. How does it work? Well, there's the arrangement section here. And if you right click, you get to have movie and you simply click open movie bring up the right 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 movie files so that's the original movie i'm not going to open it again lest it messes up my markers and everything but that's how it would work that's how i bring it into logic and then also these markers here are scene cuts or cues you can place them by pressing the plus sign here and then adding these little segments and name them accordingly as as you wish you know so so that you have an idea of where the movie goes and what the scenes are and so on and so forth um similar for tempo i'm using tempo maps as you can see there's basically two tempos 110 for the main animated parts and then 90 for the slower more serene parts and that's basically that and then i segmented um the rest of the instrumentation according to what a real orchestra would be divided into, which is string sections. I actually split up my tr string sections into violins and cello and violas on a different uh, track stack. Track stack is also important to remember. It's uh, a grouping of tracks into a stack and uh, those track stacks can then get routed to a particular uh, bus. Let's take a look at that real quick here. The violins are routed to bus nine. If I open that, they're all here on bus 9. Bus 9 is, of course, then routed to the stereo out. You could reroute it to a different bus if you wanted to. And also you can place sends, like especially uh, um, channel strips with just effects and signal shaping plugins. You can use them for the entire track stack, not just uh, every track. So that's, I think, for me, it's more convenient to, to do the mixing later on. Then let's talk about the instruments for a second here. Maybe let's listen to some music first and then talk about the instruments. I'm thinking we should call our class project Fun Guys in a Forest. <laughs> Get it? Because we're a group of fun guys and also fun guys. <laughs> so here we have the first um, cue, the first scene, the opening scene, this animated um, theme with uh, woodwinds and uh, Percussion, of course, you know, to denote this kind of marching rhythm. They're heading out into the forest. They're in an adventurous spirit. It's a field trip. Everybody's in an elevated mood. So I meant to go for a lighthearted theme. And I did so by mainly having the woodwinds carry the melody. Let's listen to those in isolation real quick. And they are supported by a brass section. 
in order to have it stand out better and have a little bit more foundation. And also you may have noticed that I went down the register into the lower octaves on the key bed, on the keyboard, so that we have a little bit more separation of uh, the instrument sections. And the last not least, um, the string section, which has kind of a chamber orchestra theme going on to support the mood, I guess, I want to say. And of course, um, percussion instruments in order to have this uh, to have this rhythm going on. These are actually stock sounds that come with Logic pre-installed, or you get to download them later on if you purchase license. And they have you can have additional sonic content. And these are called stock sounds or legacy sounds, and they sound like that. And then in order to have this kind of bassy or bassish sound going on, what I used was uh, Project Sam's Boombastic Patch. <laughs> well, it, it sounds as it's called. It's called Boombastic Basses and has these stringy, um, string-like, yeah, bass-like sounds. <laughs> So they sound like an orchestra in its in its own right, right there, right? Don't they? So the the Project Sam library really helped me a great deal. They they have a lot of magnificent sounds. We'll get to them later on. So let's talk about uh, instrumentation really quick here. Um, as you can see, there's let's start with the violin section, as this is easiest easiest, and also because I'm using largely BBC SO Discover here. Let's bring that up here. And they have this very handy depiction of a real floor plan for a real orchestra. Um, that's how an orchestra would be seated. You have the violins in the first row to the left, violins two adjacent to them, then the violas next to those, and on the right side the celli, and behind the celli the basses, the contrabasses, all surrounded uh, uh, around the choir master. And then um, the brass sections on the left, horns and trumpets, Trombones and tuba on the right, on the outer right and the outer left. Behind the flute, I mean, behind the strings, you have the, the woodwind section with piccolo, flute, oboe, clarinets, and bassoons. And at the very rear of the orchestra, and usually at an elevated level, like above the floor, is uh, the percussion instruments divided into untuned, I mean, tuned and untuned percussions. Tuned is harp and celestes, harp. Everyone knows what a harp is, <laughs> and Celeste is a kind of keyboardish instrument, um, a little metallic sounding. And then untuned percussion would be, of course, your timpanis, your uh, snares, cymbals, that kind of thing, maybe triangles, that kind of thing. So that's basically the floor plan for the orchestra, and uh, I think it's important to keep that image in mind as we go along, because I also place the instruments in the stereo mix accordingly from left to right and from front to back and we get to that in a minute but before we do since we're here uh, let's talk about these articulations which is crucial to the instrument sounding as authentic as possible uh, so you have for BBC SO Discover you have four uh, articulations for the violins here sometimes there are three sometimes just two and of course as you go higher up in the libraries you have a lot more at articulations also a lot more um, microphone positions and so on but for the free version they kept it basic basic but uh, expressive i want to say uh, you still get to do a lot with those uh, basic articulations so here we have the violins uh, i made my own patch here just called violence with articulation the articulations can be controlled by these switch um, key switches here down here the green highlighted in green which are outside the range of the instrument the range of the instrument would be here in the upper um, octaves those highlighted notes are the actual range of a of a real violin and let's hear that 
Don't know whether you can hear anything. I need to put my headphones on. Yeah, okay. And if I press any of the key switches down here, it should change the articulation. Yeah, now we go too long. Pizzicato and Tremolandi. So you can hear this uh, makes for very different sounds and, and sonic output and uh, much more expression. And you want to use those a lot along with your MIDI CC controllers. There are basically two elements here. One is for expression. The other one is called dynamics. I have them uh, on controller number 15 and 14 because on my keyboard here, these are uh, more convenient to reach than if I have to go all the way down to the uh, mod wheel and the uh, and the pitch band uh, section so I have them closer here on on those two dials but you get to assign them any way you want so there is uh, the floor plan and uh, MIDI CC controllers and like I mentioned um, the staging is important staging meaning to say where you place the instrument in the stereo field and in order to accomplish that your default would be that, you know, like a, a balancing dial that goes from left to right, all the way to the left, all the way to the right, or in the middle, in the center. But what I prefer to use is with the right click, you have this little context menu coming up, popping up, and I choose binaural pen. And uh, for each instrument, I did a uh, preset for the staging. And here we have violin staging, and they're placed similar to where the floor plan see i'm in left left section here in the inner field and same here for the staging for the violence if i switch over to violence well, let's take the celli for a minute so you see the difference celli would be here celli is here see so that's how i went about the placement of the instruments in order to have a really diversified uh balanced mix and in order to have the signals routed to the position where you expect them. And then, like I said, um, all the instrument sections are organized in track stacks because of the routing feature. So let's move on. That was the opening scene. Let's move on to the next one and see what happens. Yeah, um, the main theme again is um, here carried by the woodwind section and the string section in this case. I have to open that up. Strings and woodwinds. In isolation, they sound like that. Let's just listen to the woodwinds in isolation first. And so I had different melodies, um, like little counter melodies for the piccolo flute and uh, the bassoon in order to keep it interesting. So it starts on a more serene note because I wanted to denote or, or kind of reflect the distress that the bird is in. And Ellie is apparently, Ellie is the character here, the girl. She's apparently uh, the geek in the group and she's very savvy and, and perceptive and empathic, I want to say. So she liberates and helps the bird that got tangled up in this plastic thing here. And so it starts on a more serene note and morphs into a more positive note as she liberates the bird and the birds flee free to, to fly off and look at the bird go. She goes and Ellie's kind of elevated and I mean cheerful about that and, and happy to have helped. So we have a more uh, happy theme with a string section going on in this second part of the cut. And a little piccolo, uh, tremolo, and there's that. So let's see what else happens moving along. Out of the way, dog one. We're camping here. 
finally. So to get that barbecue burning, we just need a bit more salt. So in the next scene, um, I'm mainly using uh, Project Sam Boombastic or the sounds here that carry the marching sound and uh, the rhythmic uh, note, note about that. It's, again, it's your stock uh, percussion and I think that's about it yeah, for, this, for this cue at least. So in isolation, they sound like that. Again, that's Project Sam Boombastic, very powerful, rich uh, presets that, that we get to use here. Okay, moving along, what else we got? So now um, this is called Mickey Mousing. Uh, you know, mimicking the motion with uh, with the melodies, with the instruments. We don't want to overdo it. I'm hearing it's it's uh, it's not preferred any longer. I I, I noticed that other contenders went for much more uh, theme development, which I think is the preferable option here, because I saw kind of a cartoonish um, you know mood and and character in this. I kind of wanted to make it sound cartoonish a little bit at least in parts where it, where it's uh, appropriate it's basically the bartek pits oh yeah we need to solo these here for a second because they sound really phenomenal the lav bartek pits sound like that they are not regular the regular pizzicatas are played with the finger and uh i'm, I'm being told that the Pit, uh, Bartok pits are done by uh, reversing the bow and, and kind of hammering on the string, something like that. You can feel me in if you're a violinist and, and if I misrepresented you, I'm sorry. <laughs> and uh, what else uh, we have? Yeah, that's the next cut. I think that's basically the air percussion, some harp plucks um, and xylophone. So, moving along. Wow. It's incredible! It's a new species! What the bloody hell are those things? Really? Huh? What the bloody hell are those things? <laughs> so now we have a more serene kind of uh, Ellie's uh, awestruck by discovering the habitat of the sprites. Now even the other guys uh, are interested in what the hell bloody hell were those things. So, I kind of meant to reflect the characters by sonic texture. So whenever we see Ellie uh, as the main character, it's mostly woodwinds, flutes, uh, violins, kind of, you know, like she's light footed, she's treading lightly, and she's actually being serious about the field trip and studying, trying to study nature, as opposed to the other guys. When Whenever we see the other guys, they're kind of, I don't want to say bullies, it would be, it would be well, they actually they are bullies. So, um, I meant to denote that by having these, you know, heavy sounds and stomping, like marching and stomping, uh, treading strongly, not lightly. And so here we see mainly Ellie and that string section. And to make for a more serene feel, I introduced tubular bells and a little bit of uh, grand piano. Okay, moving along. What the bloody hell are those things? Now we're gonna meet someone. What are you guys? <laughs> I'll be right down. So they meet the head of the the sprite leader, you wanna say, the head of the sprites, you know, again mimicking, mimicking the motion, you know, falls down. And that's mostly accomplished by Boombastic preset along with uh Actually, here, this one is the one that makes for this kind of wacky, quacky thing. We take care of the animals. Plants, birds, what? Uh, guys, guys. I, uh, huh? <laughs> so again, it's more uh, of a lighthearted uh, 
kind of you know tongue in cheek character i mean like the 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 sprites while while the other guys talk to their to their boss to their ceo <laughs> Um, the other sprites keep continue doing their daily work and almost you know diligently almost invisibly and audibly but ellie perceptive as she is she notices what's going on guys guys she tries to alert them and so i had this little again chamber orchestra theme going on which is mainly violins labs ensemble and uh, project sam the short strings i think we need to listen to those in isolation because they just sound phenomenal I meant to go for this exact quality, like a like a light, like a, a delicate, but uh, punctuated, articulated sound. You know, like um, a lot of bow, a little bit of air, a little lot of string, but not not serene. It should be staccato and punctuated. And Project Sam short strings were the right patch for that, along with uh, Labs Ensemble. It sound like that. So, as you can see, um, in many cases, I doubled and tripled the tracks just to have an, an additional texture to it, a, a, an additional timbre to the sound. Project Sam was, was good together. I needed more attack, and Labs provided exactly that. So if we listen to those in isolation, we have the attack of the start of the bow and and also then the, the trailing uh, kind of sound from the short strings, Project Sam. And all that gets supported by violins 1 and 2 from BBC SO Discover. So let's listen together. Sorry. Yeah, for the bass, um, it's again Project Sam's boombastic, but also a stringy sound. So all in all, that's what I meant to go for. Sorry. And to hit the cue, I had a triangle sound somewhere here in between. Okay, let's just move on. <laughs> So now we're into different um, mood territory again. Uh, it gets scary. She, Ellie went to sleep. Apparently they had the barbecue, found the camping spot, and then everyone fell asleep. For this part, I used almost exclusively Project Sam's uh, presets, uh, like ominous lows, drones, panic, and so on. A little bit of concert grand and something called Hacks Angels, uh, Hack Angels by Labs, which is... This sound here, kind of a pad, like a like a airy, fluffy pad, and together with the Project Sam uh, presets, it sounds like that. So I meant to go for a real scary, rich, dark atmosphere, you know, like like almost nightmarish and kind of, uh, well, yeah, like a, like a horror movies almost for this cue, at least. Dystopian drones, ghostly clusters. I mean, even the names are indica indicative of, of what they sound like. Ominous lows, panic, you know, so... I can't play them here because I had to freeze those tracks in order to get through the presentation. Otherwise, the machine would have stalled, so forgive me for that. Okay, now eventually we're going to get to the action sequence here. Something happened. Uh, there's a ritual going on, which uh, Ellie again spotted. She wakes up and looks for everyone else. No one answers to her, and we're going to find out why that is. 
straight for death for leaf and stone. You picked the wrong camping spot. So apparently the other guys were taken hostage by the sprites and already, you know, taken somewhere else. And this guy here, you know, doesn't look so good. So, um, yeah, um, the friendly encounter turned, turned into something else. The sprites begin to attack. Apparently they, they are not happy with, with their visitors and all hell breaks loose. It's all out war and carnage and prepare yourself. So there's a trigger warning if you're sensitive of character. Um, you might want to skip that part. I'm going to put the chapter markers down below, so you want to skip that if you're sensitive. Spray them! <laughs> There's um basically a string of sinatos carrying the the action. We have the string section, we have the woodwinds, the brass, everything happens at the same time. We have additional drums, which are in this case uh drum led by native instruments. That's this thing. I think it was a free library also, part of a free library. And just to support the rhythm. The main rhythm are Ferrum, Percussive Hits, and Project Sam, again, and uh, what else? Yeah, a little bit of xylophone and glockenspiel, and oh, the synth bases, we're going to talk about those uh, separately. So this is the main rhythm, as you can see, uh, string ostinatos or ostinati are up here. These are quite a bit of um, notes happening here. They are all 16s and 32 uh, notes, I mean really fast sequenced and fast, uh, fast paced. So let's talk about the synth bass here for a second because I think this is interesting. For the most part I have the patch, it's called mon Monotaurus Bass which is a uh, real heavy analog bass sound. And uh, the important bit is that I added the arpeggiator, which is something I spotted in the video by Spitfire Audio, one of their composers introduced us to that. And so I had to use it right away. And the interesting thing is that even if you play just one note, uh, you can have this arpeggiated pattern going on, a sequence of, of patterns actually. I chose in favor of this one. Here's one groove five, and it sounds something like that. So I did a little bit of uh, additional filter opening. Um, which is um, accomplished by using MIDI CC controllers and automation again. And uh, in addition to that, I supported the sound. Again, I, I needed more definition, I needed more attack. And I did so by using the sculpture base, which is part of Logic's uh, arsenal. And it sounds like that. So it's a more metallic sound. Sculpture is actually a, a very powerful uh, synthesizer. It's a modeling synth, which uh, has a lot of, where is it? Here, which has a lot of uh, controls for uh, morphing the sound. You have a morph pad down here where you get the, you can even record this movement, you know, like uh, with automation, again, using MIDI CC controllers, either using your mod wheel or controllers, uh, that you assigned yourself. And uh, you get to have a lot of um, movement, I wanna say, a lot of texture, a lot of sonic uh, expression in, with this instrument. And actually there's another bass, Alchemy bass, which is also part of Logic. So together they make for a, a, a big fat foundation, but also some uh, articulation and uh, definition. And last not least, like I said, I'm a guitarist first, so I had to 
play some guitar, use some guitar here. Um, it's basically two patterns. Sounds like that. And the other one is uh, a little sequenced pattern. I mean, not sequenced, I actually played it. <laughs> And I left those unquantized because they were going to be buried in the mix anyway. So if they're not all accurate, I, I didn't mind that much. And together we have this for the rhythmic content. So it's basically three, four tracks only. Five, six, seven tracks. So there's that, and um, then also the, the, the string ostinatos and, and all that. Okay, moving along, uh, moving into the last few scenes. So we see that all hell breaks loose and, you know, like I said, it's all out carnage and all out war. And then we move into change of mood. <laughs> I call it the bird theme. The bird comes to the rescue. Ellie saved the bird earlier on. Now the bird saves her and comes to the rescue. And so I meant to go for this uh, positive major key harmonic theme. Again, uh, sonic, sonic leads, strings, uh, violins and woodwinds, and a little bit of horns and brass section, along with some harp plucks. And there's that. And then finally moving on to the last scene. So um yeah um there's a little bit of action again um and this is mainly done just by a a minor scale played by the string section sounds like that strings and woodwinds again yeah and then there's this little uh, chromatic sequence and we're done and there's another theme right before the ending. So the, the last theme is a little kind of almost, I don't want to say sad, but kind of somber because I didn't think this was a heroic moment. I mean, Ellie prevailed and she got away uh, alive but barely so, and she's badly scratched and worked up, and uh, I would say she's probably also disappointed. She wanted to be friends with uh, with the sprites and study them, be friendly, and, and they attack her of all characters, but at least she gets spared the other ones. Probably not. <laughs> and for the last scene, now the war is over, Ellie prevailed. I'll give you that one, Brother Bird. All right, sprites, let's burn the bodies and have some peppermint tea. <laughs> let's burn the bodies and have some peppermint tea. <laughs> Amazing. So I reintroduced or reiterated uh, the, the kind of chamber orchestra -ish theme from the beginning where we saw the sprites dragging away the sneakers, uh, that sneaker, and, and uh, shortened that theme, you know, for time constraints here. And But sonically, it's the same thing. And so that is maybe, well, I went about this uh, intentionally. I, I developed little themes and, and cues for each character as well as for the cue. And sonically, I kept with a certain instrumentation for each character. And that's what I think I saw in other movies that I studied so far. And of course, um, others approached the thing much differently, as I, as I noticed, um, keeping it more like melodic, a lot more melodic and I'm, I'm, I must say I'm, I'm very impressed with the level of uh, expertise and um, experience that everybody brings to the table here. So I guess I must consider myself still a beginner. This is why I did this video, in hoping that some of the content will be helpful to some of you starting out. I will work on my presentation skills. This is a lot going on and also the machine is not ideal for that. You know, it's too much on the CPU, as you noticed, so the sync goes out of sync. 
but um, hopefully it helped some. And if you thought it was useful, um, let me know so. Subscribe to the channel. Feel free to share this. Feel free to comment. Uh, let me know what you liked or didn't like so that I can work on my on becoming better with this and hopefully doing it again. All right. Thanks for watching and uh, thanks for taking an interest. I appreciate that. See you again very soon, hopefully. Bye-bye. This is Westbound for Westbound Music. Take care. Mm -hmm.